It's been over a year since the launch of Warzone, and in that time, I've personally put in about 500 hours into the game, almost 21 days of that past year, which tells me a lot of things. Number one, I could probably use more of a life, but number two, I learned a lot in that time that I think is applicable for everyone's gameplay, myself included, I'm still learning, but I wanted to take a look back at these last 21 days played throughout the past year and talk about some things that I think could absolutely apply to helping you out and improving your game. So today, we're gonna run down how these last 500 hours of game time has put me into the statistical 1% category of Warzone and how you can replicate it as well. As we go along on our thoughts down below, would you guys like to see some more in-depth tips here at this? I got a video or two planned, I think, that goes super in-depth with some things that you probably wouldn't ever think of doing but help greatly in Warzone. Would you like to see that kind of stuff? Feel free to let me know, but hopefully enjoy the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing running all things Warzone, Cold War, and anything COD related. We're on that road to 400,000 subscribers, and we'll keep the day with all of it. So if you're interested in joining the community, I'd love to have you. That said, let's talk about these tips and what I've learned over the course of the last year. Now, for clarity's sake, I don't think that I'm a god at Warzone. I'm no Huskers, no Aiden, no Frozone, Swag, Nick Merck, Symphony, Cloaksy, whoever you want to talk about. But it comes down to it with the millions and millions of players. When it comes to things like your win totals, your KD ratio, your placements, kills, and score per minute, as well as win percentage, technically speaking, myself and most of my squad actually place in that top 1%. Now, there's a big difference when it comes down to the top 1% of players and the top 0.1 or 0.01%. But fundamentally, there's a lot of things that I think that from my time within Warzone can be shared that can help improve your game. And even as we'll talk about, even mine, I'm still learning even after 21-ish days played of Warzone. But fundamentally, starting at a baseline, one of the big things that I think that can be shared is that there is always room to improve. That's a bit more open-ended and a bit more ambiguous of an air quote teaching moment, but it's the truth. Through every single engagement, every single match, especially those games where my squad loses, objectively, I can think of things that I could have done better to secure a kill or two more, to stay alive longer, or how I could have been closer to being that last one standing and maybe clutching up for my squad. Granted, I'll absolutely rage a lot when it comes to the initial death. That's just instinct. Like, I rarely will just be like, GG's, nice shot, as a death happens. I'm naturally just competitive, so any death irritates me. I always want to do better and always feel like I should be doing better. So in that moment, you're always going to have, oh, come on, man, like that's, that's garbage. But when I take that 30 seconds to cool down, my mind immediately will jump to, okay, I could have done this differently, or I could have done that differently. I'll always find something, and there always will be something. I could have disengaged that fight earlier, I could have rotated out, I could have popped dead silence, I could have picked a player off in the back instead of the one leading the pack, and a million other situational things. And that's where it comes to one of the biggest aspects of Warzone whenever I think about my last 500 hours played within the game. Warzone is as much a thinking and strategy game as it is a game of gun skill at higher levels. This is one of those things that you start to learn early on, and I think that when you're playing a lot, you'll start to familiarize yourself with certain situations, locations, and how player behavior actually comes into account. And if you start to do it often enough, you'll be able to predict those situations and see the various outcomes as they happen. One clip in recent memory that was absolutely hilarious to me was a simple clip of prediction that someone tried to say I was cheating in, which to me is wild in and of itself because there's so many clips where even here making it on the channel, my aim's atrocious. I don't think I'm anywhere near the accuracy or that skill level where the prospect of maybe he's cheating should be coming into account. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but the clip itself is a great example of where that thinking game comes into play, where it's an example of outplaying and outthinking your opponents in that real-time fashion. So I guess we can just play the clip. I'll walk you through it. In this one, my squad, normally consisting of Lazy, Immortal, and Ink Slasher, will sometimes split off into groups of two and try and play aggressive. Immortal ended up getting a dev error and his game crashed, so it was just Ink Slasher and I split off into two, and then Lazy somewhere else. Ink Slasher and I were approaching a king on the rooftop apps of the edge of downtown, where he ends up getting killed. He makes an initial call out, plus the other two members on that team are also using unsilenced weapons, shooting at him. So immediately I know that he ends up getting killed by somebody and where their position is. I also see on the minimap that there's somebody else behind him. So I know of three people right off the bat there. I know of the king, I know of a guy that's additionally above me thanks to the minimap indicators, and also one guy on the ground. With that information, I'm aware that I'm in a 1v3 at minimum. There very well could be a fourth, but maybe not. So with that knowledge that I'm in a 1v3, I decide, hey, let's plate back up, let's get our armor and full health back, and then pop a UAV 
to keep an eye on the minimap and to see if they are showing up or if I just got lucky they may have had ghosts and were using unsilenced weapons. But sure enough, they do show up on the minimap. They're not using ghosts. And once I do this, I have the sweeping locations of where those players will be. And I see that they're in the street looting on my level. Also consistent with those calls that Cory or Ink Slasher made while stuck in a transition screen from a kill cam to then spectating me, which is kind of a bug that happens within Warzone. But I end up peeking the doors and activating dead silence because I know that they're right around the corner here for me. I don't want to give away my position too much. I don't want to slam through the door because that produces an audio cue that you can hear from that distance away. But I spot one looting, which is an easy kill. And as I'm shooting, I see another UAV ping to the right just over the wall of where the other guy is, in which once downed, here comes an easy read on a target because the guy has two options to my right. Either one, push all the way around like I did, in which case there's a strong chance that his teammate is thirsted by the time that he gets there to me, or push and challenge that window that I shot from and hope that I'm either low on ammo, I don't expect him, whatever the case may be, and he catches me off guard. Unbeknownst to him though, his teammate actually has a good angle if I push out, so I couldn't thirst his teammate immediately. But he also doesn't know that I have dead silence and ammo, and also can hear him sight. coming, so I can anticipate that gunfight, which makes for an easy outplay. That's two down right there. As for the third, I don't blame him for checking the rooftop and looking for me, and admittedly, the reason that I get this kill is a combination of two things. One, probably just bad luck of him not looking at the exact angle that I end up peeking from. He probably didn't expect me to double back to all the way where I started, but also number two, the AUG is ridiculously overpowered, and I only needed two to three bursts to kill him while he's out in the open and challenging that gunfight, so the TTK is ridiculously quick on that. That's a prime example, if you ask me, about the thinking element of the game, outplaying your opponent, trying to read their behaviors, and getting the jump up on it with all the utilization that you have. I've been through enough engagements that I can recognize when and where a player will be that I can dictate the play one or the other, especially with things like dead silence and UAVs in pocket. Now, had any of them had ghost, that makes the engagement that much harder and maybe I don't get out of it. But with the information that I had, it's a perfect play. So that to me, I think is a great example of once you get into certain engagements, you start to learn and recognize the traits of players and how you can outplay them with their own maneuvers. Thinking out of the way here at this, another huge thing that over the past 500-ish hours that I've had to experience within Warzone is that of the callouts are absolutely key. If you end up playing with a squad, you're off to a great start here at this. If you play, say, a solo duo, solo trio, or solo quad, you're already at a disadvantage, not only because you have different numbers of players you have to take down before wiping a squad, but also because more eyes helps out greatly. If a teammate spots them and can live ping somebody, that is a great situational awareness for everybody on your team to know that there's somebody there. Or even just something as simple as, say, in that last clip, Corey being able to call out where one of those players were for me. That helped out greatly in securing a 1v3 situation. Callouts, information sharing, and communication at its core is probably one of the most key things about team aspects of Warzone. It helps out more than you ever would know. Now, another huge thing is that movement is absolutely key. Now, this is kind of hard if you jump back and forth between Cold War and Warzone since the engine and movement is so different, but when you get into it, things like slide canceling has become something that helps out not only speed up your movement overall, but also makes you a harder moving target for enemies to end up hitting. Plus also, as of recently, something I've played around with a lot, probably the last couple of days playing in terms of overall playtime, so probably about like two months, three months at this point now, is auto tax sprint. That's something that is absolutely awesome when it comes to this kind of stuff because it just keeps that pacing up. Though in closer quarter situations, might not help you out all that much, but when you think about the vast world of Verdansk, it's gonna help out traverse that a lot more than if you have to just button mash to end up tax sprinting. As simple as it is, also one of the things that from day one still rings true out of all of the tips we've ever talked about here on the channel, contracts are still just as important as they were at Warzone's launch. Get that cash, get that information, get wins. Whether it be recons, whether it be scavenger contracts, whether it be bounties, whether it be even the ability to pick your entire squad up with the most wanted contract, it's great to get that cash for utilities once completing it for things like UAVs, self revives, and anything else. Plus also, again, that information of being able to even know where the next zone will be, that can come in massive handy for early rotations, outthinking your opponents with information that they don't necessarily have. Bounty contracts, your enemies could be ghosted, but that's something you get relative information on where they're at and where to be expecting a gunfight, even if they don't show up on your UAVs. And things like satchels, who doesn't love to have more armor plates? Plus, the fact the armor satchels are still bugged, so 
maybe not necessarily bugged. Maybe it was actually a design choice at this point. But whenever you pick up an armor satchel, you end up getting eight plates right out of the gate. Even if the person you ended up killing that had that didn't have any plates left on them, once you pick it up, you'll get eight automatically, which is also another great way that you can help out your team. Just say, hey, I'm going to take these extra plates. You take the satchel or vice versa. If a player ends up having extra plates while they die, but they have a satchel, they'll drop those plates plus the satchel. So you can end up getting at max 16 plates off a dead body. So definitely take advantage of that. Another big thing that is absolutely crucial, I think, to know is that of knowing rotations in and out of buildings, in and out of areas. One thing that I absolutely cannot stand whenever we end up playing as a squad is when we end up getting forced to the center of a larger zone, because that makes the 360 degrees in which an enemy could end up taking you out. But if you end up, say, taking a rover, patrolling the outside of the map, clearing those players off that are stragglers that are riding the zone, you not only end up getting some free kills out there, but you also end up cutting down the area in which you could end up taking some live fire from 360 degrees to potentially like 170 160 because at the edge of you is gas and you can see everything that's there unless they're camping in zone stim glitching which likely isn't the case for a majority of engagements so you know where a lot of those engagements next and upcoming would be coming from the more you end up playing the more you'll also end up noticing some smaller details like different jump spots things like calling your loadouts inside so that you can end up getting that extra cover but you can end up still getting your loadout through the roof and actually that brings me to the next kind of discussion that i want to talk about is if you guys would like to see some very in-depth specific tips like that feel free to let me know in the comments i definitely think that i want to do a video upcoming here with this compiling all these smaller things you may never have even thought of and putting them all into one place that can greatly help you out but Anyways, that's kind of been my, at a glance, 500 hours, 20-ish days, 21 days played of Warzone and what I've learned at a fundamental base level here with this. So that, I think, is where we're going to wrap it up. I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. What have you guys learned out of your playtime within Warzone? Feel free to drop it down below, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully it provided some insight or potentially something useful you can take into your own game. Whatever it is, feel free to let me know. But as well, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you just stay up to date with all things Warzone, Cold War, and anything COD-related. We'll keep the day with all of it. If you also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected outside of YouTube. Probably live on both those. So if you guys want to struggle conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.